he has reached rarefied air with 700 career wins, two full generations as a teacher and coach. But when the ultimate honor was coming, induction to the Basketball Hall of Fame, Temple head coach John Cheney was right in character. I was donating money to the Hall of Fame uh, to build a new facility they had for, for a few years in the past. And one morning I was getting out of the shower when they called me on the phone and uh, and, and, and the guy on the phone said, uh, uh, Coach, this is uh, uh, so-and-so from the Hall of Fame calling you. I says, I don't give a damn who you are. I'm not giving you any more money, so get off the phone. <laughs> the guy says, no, no, no. You know, I says, I get off the phone, so I slammed the phone down. <laughs> they called me back and said, Coach, do not slam the phone down. You don't have to give us any money. We're just calling you to tell you that you've been selected for the Hall of Fame. <laughs> This is indeed a very special man. From his earliest days coaching high school in Philadelphia, through his decade at Cheney State College, where he won a Division II National Championship in 1978, to more than 20 years defining the program at Temple University, John Cheney has been one of a kind. I've been very consistent about everything that I've done, and as I look at it, many of my fellow coaches have found themselves in situations where they're in two or three different jobs now and some of no longer coaching right now and I feel pretty proud of the fact that I've stayed on the on the on the on the right track uh, only thing about it is you can't be sitting on that track you got to keep moving because the train coming you know he has taken the owls to the postseason 20 times to the elite eight on five different occasions and that consistency, which governs his every decision, remains true. I don't buy bad behavior from youngsters. I get rid of them uh, as quickly as I, I find it. Uh, I don't tolerate kids trying to play basketball and not going to class. I get rid of them as soon as I, I find that out. So I've been very consistent about where I am. And the kids know me. <laughs> not only the youngsters on my team, but very often parents and youngsters know me. And that's why a lot of times youngsters don't want to come here because they don't want to be under that strong uh, disciplinary rule. But it is far from an unyielding disposition. He knows kids have changed as times have changed. Physical abilities at times mitigate his style of play. He's got to slow them down, allow them to let the game come to them. We have youngsters today whose uh, who's, uh, uh, physical uh, abilities, their, their, their motive abilities, is in opposition to the basics, in opposition to what you're trying to teach, in opposition to a team kind of discipline, in opposition to uh, what you can influence in some young kids. You've got a lot of kids who are being influenced by so many other uh, avenues that, it's, uh, that you have to bend a little bit, hoping that you can manage and you can ultimately uh, change the direction of some of the kids but he remains driven by the same internal fire, helping youngsters become men. Being there after the harshest episode, the toughest loss, for he will always believe the words of Mary McLeod Bethune, who said, as you climb, you should lift. We practice at five or something like that in the morning, and you'll get kids after a loss coming back at 4.30 in the morning. They are driven, and if you can't be someone that's driven, and you can't be someone that, uh, that can pick up the mail and, and help them go forward, uh, then you should get out of this business.